Hi, and welcome back to our Saturday sofa share. Um, normally we like to be quite upbeat really, don't we, when we're talking about sort of subjects to do with sales of properties, buying properties, rentals, that kind of thing. Um, but a bit of a sad one for us this week, and for the buyer as well. Um, unfortunately, we lost a sale. Yeah, we're gonna put our hands up. Sale fell through, we didn't actually manage to get that through to exchange of contracts. Does that make us a bad agent? I don't think so. I don't think so, no. It's, and it, unfortunately, it's nothing to do with us that we could have influenced either. But so, uh, yeah. It's beyond our control. But I think if we don't sit here sometimes and put our hands up and go, ah, oh, that's kind of upset us a bit, then we wouldn't really be real people and with a, a beating heart and lifeblood and all that, would we? So I think it's good that we kind of recognise these things. And something that we are going to take from this is our taking on procedure. Um, so, Andrew, what happened? So. Talk us through. Uh, so in a nutshell, the, uh, the owner is their second home for, for the owner and uh, they found out literally at the last minute uh, following their meeting with their accountant that they were going to be hit with a huge uh, tax bill for uh, capital gains tax, which they hadn't factored into the sale price and their uh, cost moving forward. Um, and it just made it un, uh, uh, not suitable to sell the property anymore from a financial perspective. So, I think uh, we're talking £27,000 yeah, tax bill, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, so which uh, I no get. Small, no small amount of money. No, it's not. It's not like a kind of five hundred pound redemption penalty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, these things happen. Mm -hmm. Things crop up. People don't understand what the penalties are going to be. They don't understand the implications, tax implications. Um, Andrew, what can what sort of things should people really be looking for? Other than is my house clean and tidy, and my garden done, and the decorating done? Is it well? Set? What's the real key crucial things that people? That, or that crop up for us that people need to be looking at? Yeah, we touched on it briefly there, but probably the main things that have come across is uh, mortgage redemption penalties. That would be when you've got a, uh, a fixed deal normally with your lender. Uh, if you end that deal early, so say it's a five-year fix and you want to sell your home after two years of that five-year deal, then there will be a clause in that uh, mortgage deal that says you will have a redemption penalty to pay. Um, and that can sometimes run into many, many thousands That's of pounds. That's because of the discount they're giving you, isn't yeah, it? Exactly. Actually, penalty if you come away from yeah, that, which yeah. is, I um, think, yeah, I think a lot of people that have bought and sold understand mm -hmm. that particular point, but I think more importantly, how much is it going to cost them? Exactly, so it's really important to have a conversation with your broker or your mortgage lender direct to yeah. check, check the deal that you've got in place and just to be aware of any uh, extra costs that you are going to incur in your, in your cost of moving. I suppose in the preparation for that, um, if you're not sure, if you don't know who you, uh, your lender, or if you don't know, or you haven't got the time to ring your lender, the more importantly, I think, mm -hmm. just let us know. We'll put you in touch with people that can help you on that. It doesn't cost you a penny to find out um, what your redemption penalty is, and then we can sort of guide you and move you on. Mm. What else, Andrew, um, what are we looking for? Nothing I was thinking of. You make sure you've got clear title on your property. So uh, obviously, if you've got a mortgage, then the mortgage will be there as a charge on your property. But quite often, people do have a second mortgage or what mm. used to be called a, uh, a secured loan. Yep. Uh, I think they change secured loan to second mortgage. Um, so you need to be uh, primed and ready. Probably make contact either via the solicitor or direct with the people who have got other charges on your property to make them aware of your intent to sell. Yeah. Um, and to put them on standby because that will delay things when your sister sees your title plan and mm -hmm. sees you've got a second mortgage. Um, maybe they're going to want details of it as well, aren't they? Yeah, you they need to be. forewarn them and forearm yeah. them. Yeah, and if, okay. there was a, if there was a charge on your property from a debt, which yeah. you know, sadly a lot of us have incurred over the past, that will sit there on your uh, title deeds and will need to be dispersed uh, on completion. But of course, when your sister's having to track down all of these remote people who've got maybe a charge on the property, it's just going to delay the process. So. I think one of the ones on that is when, say for example, um, you're dealing with an elderly relative's property or parents or whatever, um, and whether they've gone into a home or unfortunately have passed away, which is very sad, um, quite a lot of the time they have those equity release things. Yeah, yeah. So again, it's just being aware um, and it can sound really harsh, but just make sure any parents you know you're gonna to have to look after or relatives you're gonna to have to look after, they keep you fully abreast of what's going on with all the right details. It just makes life easy for you um, at the end of the day. Anything else, Andrew? Uh, maybe to say uh, sales through a divorce uh, to make sure there's not a, uh, an ex in the background who- uh, We've just had that at the top of the chain, haven't we? Yeah, uh, it's further down the chain, actually. Oh, so is it? Right, okay. So had a client wanted to buy a house through us, um, and when the house went to the market, a jilted ex, uh, then try to stop the sale of the property and uh, take it to court to, to stop the, uh, the, the proceeds of the sale. There must be some financial implication there, of course. Um, but that rolled on and on and on. And it can do as well, can't it? Particularly if it's a, a, a bit of a, I say, a nasty split, whatever you want to call it. It's never easy, whatever happens. But um, if you're not in agreement, but I remember that one uh, we exchanged on it yesterday, actually, at the top of the chain, the couple there. 
because um, that was the end of the chain, the one they were buying through the other agent. Yeah. But the other agent was hadn't even thought about looking at how's the money going to be split, has it been agreed, is everybody in the right place? So yeah, not 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 really exciting news today, unfortunately, but yeah. really important stuff. Um, so rather than just sort of going along and thinking, yeah, I put my house on the market, just make sure you're ticking all those boxes. But again, Andrew's here to advise you on anything to do with that. You can guide people. Um, we've got some fantastic people in place who can look at things like your redemption penalties. Um, so again, when you go to renew your next mortgage, don't just think, oh, I'm gonna sign up for 10 years. Because if you wanna move in two years time, it's gonna cost you an absolute arm and a leg on your redemption penalty, isn't it? Because yep. of the reduced um, fees. Yeah. So, property of the week. Yeah, fantastic one. So um, <laughs> hopefully some of you guys would have seen it already, but. Uh, Roy and our marketing guru, Emily, who works uh, tirelessly behind the scenes, uh, came up with a uh, little bit of a comedy listing for Yeah, Halloween. so we'll put the details up there for you to yeah, see. Yeah, but uh, Roy, tell the viewers a bit more. <laughs> so yeah, we, we are listing, um, looking to sell a six bedroom spooktacular house. Um, the, the details say themselves. I mean, we just like to have a bit of fun every now and then. Um, and we pop this up. We've had, I think what's really nice, Andrew, is that I was out quite a bit today, and when I've come back, you guys are giving me some great feedback. I've had a few comments on Facebook from people, oh, can we view it, can we view it tomorrow night? And that's all it was about. It's just a little bit of fun, you know, to come away from the humdrum of buying and selling. Let's, let's throw a bit of um, sort of frivolity in there, particularly with Halloween. Um, who knows what we're going to sell in Christmas? At Christmas, the North Pole, maybe? Yeah, no, you never know. know. Yeah, I had one chap who was uh, searching the property, came across this listing, and he said he did put a smile on his face and uh, really the boredom of looking for his next property. So, <laughs> was really so there we go. Yeah. We put a smile on someone's face today, which is fantastic. And I think he shared it with his friends as he well, didn't they? He shared the listing. So yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So it's just a bit of fun. So I hope you enjoyed that one. But that's it from us. Be safe this weekend. Um, hopefully the weather will cheer up for tomorrow night. I know tonight's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. So if you are out trick-or-treating, just be mindful. Um, if people have put signs up, don't knock on my door. Don't do it. Just, just physically don't do it. And please, if you are teenagers watching this and you think it's fun to throw eggs at people's houses or whatever, mm. it's not really. No. It really isn't. So have fun. Stay safe. Enjoy it. Hope you'll get way too many sweets and, mm. and kind of sit there and not obviously be sick, but um, have great fun doing that. I know my kids love doing it and have done over the years. So mm. that's it from me for the weekend. Anything else from you, Andrew? That's it. Have a super one and stay safe as well as it. All right, take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.